Good morning, everybody. This is Nicholas Teo from CMC Markets in Singapore. Anyway, just a few things today that we're following. Uh, it's been quite quiet on the news front here. Uh, we decided to follow some US uh, equities and US uh, markets. Uh, this week is going to be quite busy uh, because it's the beginning uh, of the uh, uh, reporting season for first quarter earnings. And over the course of the next few days, we're going to see roughly about 150 companies uh, come up with their uh, uh, first quarter earnings. This together with next week will probably uh, see the market follow some of these uh, big corporates to see what uh, they uh, have reported and also what they will be guiding for the first uh, for the second quarter going 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 forward. One of the key features we think uh, will be the play on the U.S. dollar or the strong the strong U.S. dollar for that matter, and how that has played into some of the margins for uh, some big companies, especially companies who are involved in uh, to a larger degree in exports or or, or, or to a, to a globalized market. Uh, this was a, a significant uh, play in their previous reporting season where they saw margins being tightened because of a stronger US dollar. Now, uh, in the course of this, uh, let's just pull up the S&P chart uh, that we have here. Uh, we see that uh, the, we see a sort of a triple top uh, level forming. Uh, now this this could mean one of a few things. Uh, it could mean that uh, it's uh, going to be it's proven time and time again over the last two three months or so a big resistance. Or it could also mean that if the S and P has managed to find strength to push above this, we could see much higher levels. Uh, but essentially, this market has actually traded flat in the last three four months. Uh, relatively, this has actually been a big underperformer because the European markets over the course of the time have also actually shot up quite a bit. Uh, and needless to say, the Asian markets led largely by China uh, has also had a much better showing uh, this first quarter of the year. Uh, now, I just want to draw your attention to this bit of the chart again. Now, this sell down that we saw late February into March was a result of uh, weaker corporate results that were announced by, by, by big companies in the US uh, in view of their fourth quarter earnings. Uh, so, so essentially, you know, if the, 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 the weight of the US dollar or weight of the strong US dollar uh, is going to play a part in these companies, we may see things coming down to test perhaps the 2041 sort of level once more. Uh, well, we'll probably know, uh, to give you an idea, companies like Microsoft uh, that we have here uh, was one of those companies that reported poorer results or rather, rather a miss uh, and, and, and they suggested that uh, the US dollar or the weak US dollar at that point in time, as you see here, uh, had played a part in uh, depressing margins uh, and also uh, uh, reporting uh, uh, weaker translation losses uh, in turn. Uh, now, I thought it would be interesting just to pull up Microsoft's uh, uh, Morningstar research uh, uh, sheet that we have here. Uh, you see that despite the, 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 the pullback, Microsoft is only trading at around 17 times indicated here, uh, forward earnings, uh, sorry, uh, TTM, which is 12-month uh, trailing earnings. Uh, this compares to a, uh, you know, on a forward basis, you're looking at a 14 times uh, earnings reported for for uh, Microsoft now, which is actually not too bad for a company that size. Uh, going back to our charts uh, on the Singapore front, we are following Genting this morning, uh, or at least for the next few days. Genting Bahad, or rather Genting Singapore, uh, is trading between these two gaps here. Of around 94, around 9750, all the way up to the 104 half. Uh, it's looking to try to close this gap that was established late February again. Uh, the reason why I've pulled this chart out and I made a bit of mention in this morning note is because we are firstly seeing an island reversal formation down here. Island, for, uh, island reversals usually signify a turning point for the market. Uh, in this case, it could also prove to be the case. Uh, but there may be triggers uh, the next few days because uh, one of Genting's competitor, uh, Marina Bay Sands, will be reporting their results through their parent L, uh, Las Vegas Sands, I think, tomorrow night. Uh, and uh, I mean, most of the market's players here are looking for guidance to see what uh, that may uh, be for the company. But it's something that we are definitely keeping our eye on. Thank you.